everyone, and welcome back to my tutorial campaign in Realistic Progression Zero, the campaign mod for the Realism Overhaul suite of Realism Mods in Kerbal Space Program. In the last episode, we landed a couple probes on Mars, uh, not without uh, some bugs from various things, and also a head issue where I didn't consider uh, line of sight. Uh, but eventually it all came to rights, although I did have to reload at one point, which I've basically not been doing this entire campaign, uh, which I felt compelled to do due to a bug, uh, but it also allowed me to correct for some stupidity. Uh, so that is all behind us now, um, and as I mentioned in the last episode, I will handle the arrow breaking off screen. I'm not going to subject anyone to that. Uh, so right now we have to look ahead to Labrador 5, which is going to be our complete test of our um, lunar orbital mission using the Labrador command and service module using a trebuchet launcher uh, with the Ranger upper stage which is basically halfway between the Centaur and the S4 stage so it has four RL-10 engines. Um, so with this ca capability we can toss about I think uh, what was it? 12, 13 tons TLI? About 12. 12 tons TLI, let's call it. Um, and that's plenty. So this is going to not have crew aboard. We've substituted lead ballast for them. Um, and we're going to see whether it all works. Then we've also queued up these two further Labrador launches. They are going to be the crewed launches. Um, we also just unlocked this new Hydrolox technology, and we have the, um, oh, interesting, the test flight icon is not showing up in Space Center today. Well, that's, that's how it goes. Um, we have the RL-10A33 being researched. So, that's all to look forward to. And, yeah, so we're just going to go ahead and warp until this is ready. And we're going to go ahead and... Uh, we're going to duplicate it just in case something goes wrong. That takes a pretty chunk of change. And... Um, Yeah, so if something does happen to go wrong, then we will have that backup to be built, and that can be our, our backup for a, a test launch. Uh, we're going to go ahead and select the sounding rocket missions, because why not? It's free money. Uh... Nothing else looks interesting for now. All right, so now we have to warp until it's rolled out. And now we get to launch it. So let's see. Go ahead and launch. And nope, nobody aboard this one. Loading, loading, loading. There we are. Now that is a <laughs> that has a very short and fat first stage. I forgot I forgot just how <laughs> I forgot what this launch vehicle looked like. It's pretty funny. Um Right. 
So we're going to want to, uh, as usual, I have to go ahead and look up what what uh, my actual uh, launch parameters should be. They should be. Eighty, one fifty, forty. According to that, I'm not sure I believe it. Let me check my other folder. Uh, AR. Nope, that's weird. Well, okay. But we do know that we have fifty-six eight hundred nominal liquid hydrogen. Okay, that's cool. Let's go ahead and target the moon. The moon set as target. Now, oh, that's intriguing. It looks like ugh. E it looks like we might have to do a full coast, which means I'm inclined actually to just wait a few days, kind of regardless. Because um, we actually want a coast period. All right. Now let's go ahead and launch into plane of target. All right, so this means that we are guaranteed that we will have at least a small coast period. My worry was when the moon was over here, that meant we would either have to do a direct injection, or worse yet, we would have to orbit almost a full orbit, say like 80 minutes out of the 90 minute period, um, before that maneuver. You basically, f when the moon is about here to here, it's a really bad time to launch a cryogenic stage. All right. We are nearly ready to launch. Let us hope that we do not have any engine failures, as usual. And. Good light on all seven, so let's launch. Do we? Yes, we do. Okay. Up, up, and away we go. Now, if memory serves, we cut, we cut off the center engine at two minutes and twenty seconds elapsed. Oh, huh. I never actually... <sighs> I never actually changed these for what it's actually doing. That was silly. One hundred, one fifty, forty. That seems about right. Now, you'll notice that most of the Delta V is being provided by the final stage, and that's because the rest of it's all Carolox. Uh, we also forgot to aim right a little bit. Let's come right a little bit. Alright, nothing odd going on in the log, so that's good.
what is going on here? Mechjeb seems to be having some slight control issues. So I'm just providing a little bit of a manual touch here. Alright, this is looking more reasonable. We have one minute burn time remaining on the first stage. Everything has been going well so far. Having just come from the live stream of the Falcon 9 launch, it is nice to see that Real Plume is actually making things look rather like that launch. Um, Almost time to... Apologies for the ding. Almost time to come back to the left. I think that will be good. Okay. Just about time to cut off the center engine. We are at... Two minutes and 20 seconds. Center engine off. We just hit peak of 4Gs. And our final acceleration on the stage will be slightly less than 4Gs as it happens. Burnout. Separation. And second stage ignition. Pitch up, and everything's looking good, so let's get rid of the launch escape tower. These are by far the most expensive launches we've ever done. In fact, they are ten times as expensive as some of our, even some of our lunar probes, if memory serves. Some of our original Catapult A lunar probe launches were about, I think, four to five thousand, and this was something like forty-five thousand, if not more. But, happily, it's far less expensive and far lighter. It's less than a third of the mass. Um, it's more like two-sevenths the math. The, the mass of a Saturn V launch. And certainly way cheaper. Like, gobs cheaper. Alright, our inclination is lowering. Time to Apogee. I don't like that. I feel like we should pitch up a little bit more. I feel like maybe my notes on how to launch this thing were lying to me. Or other things have changed since then. I don't know. So we've pitched up a little bit extra. our desired insertion apogee, but that's fine because we... that's expected. Okay, now we're going to pitch down because I like that this is... 
This was decreasing much slower. We only have about three minutes burn time on this stage remaining. So, so far so good. We're still not even going four kilometers per second or Senator fixed. Um, so... Wait, is... I think EC, ECEF is inertial, but I'm not sure. I forget. Alright. Apogee is still rising. We haven't picked up that much in the way of steering losses, which is nice. It's, um... Yeah, only 21 meters per second so far, steering losses. It's pretty nice. Uh, hopefully my pitch decisions have been acceptable. Our inclination is... Relative inclination is still sinking. That's good. We're about... Yeah. Strictly speaking, we're about 0.1 degrees off the inclination of the moon, but because our, our longitude descending node is different, um, that's why our relative inclination is higher. Okay, this decrease in time is going about right. I think we want to go up to about 215 kilometers in apogee, if memory serves. Um, so let's pitch down a little bit more. Maybe only about 205, actually. That gives us 20 kilometers to fall. Alright, so we've actually decreased our inclination a bit too much. So we're slightly lower than the inclination of the moon now. Whoa, wrong way. That's right. We are now gaining time to apogee, so let's pitch way the heck down. And look at that wonderful, wonderful, wonderful relative inclination. Look at how low that is. light on this stage. Let's go back up to plus 15 because we're going to start falling soon. Nope, that's too much. Let's try 5. Actually, let's try 0. I think could right, because we do want to actually start falling a little bit. We don't want this high of a parking orbit. That's silly. Uh, come right a little bit more. Lower that down. even more. Yeah, we're going to be burning for a while. So, alright, now we've fallen down. But, oh, we're actually... Well, that's interesting. Uh-oh. Please tell me I didn't do something stupid. I have a sinking suspicion that I did something very stupid. I did do something very stupid. Well, uh, I guess we're doing a free return mission with this. We're not doing a full lunar orbital mission. That explains a lot of things. That's acceptable. 
All right. Uh, apparently, we were using our Earth orbital service module rather than our lunar orbital service module. That is why we have 1.5 kilometers extra delta V right now. Uh, that was really quite stupid of me. But if we do a proper free return trajectory, we will simply loop right around the moon and come right back home. Um, and we have plenty of margin for error. Now, that should give us, it gives us a memory series about 660 meters per second delta V, which is fine for fine-tuning things. Um, so, let's go ahead and set up a home and transfer. And now we get to make it a free return. So, we want to... put a fair amount of extra delta V in and we want to burn well ahead of the moon somewhere around here um, come on there we are guess we did we went way ahead of the moon this time Let's look at what this entails. Okay. Wrong side. That's a nice looking free return. And what kind of periapsis does it give us? Interesting. Uh, however, we need to adjust this a little bit such that we actually have a <laughs> lunar periapsis that doesn't kill us. Oops. A little bit more. There, how does that look? 191. Whoops, that's still going to kill us. That's too much. That is not also not acceptable because it will also kill us. So let's try really rather a bit more. Or a bit less, I guess. Yeah, that looks better. Okay, and what kind of Heh. That is not a survivable per return perigee. Is that a survivable one? Not as such, no. Um, that looks rather more survivable. Uh, that's not awesome. Why is it so high? That's lower, but again, that leaves us coming in too sharply.
That's acceptable. What does it look like at the moon? Also acceptable. All right, let's go ahead and burn this thing. Interestingly enough, we're almost at the node. Now, had I more time, I probably could have refined that to a really low lunar periapsis, about 100 kilometers, while still having an acceptable free return, but I'm willing to accept this simply because we are just in the business of demonstrating its possibility. Um, Okay, before I forget again, let's deactivate that. All right, now execute to node and provide some knowledge and ignition. Okay, so as you could see, um, and Hopefully on follow-up missions, when we have more time to sit around and plan, I will go into more detail as to what I did while I was doing it. But, as you can see here, we've created that traditional figure eight free return loop. Which, pro which works in about that pattern. Um, and what's going on here? is that we're coming in ahead of the moon and swinging by the moon. And in doing so, the moon is going to provide a negative gravity assist. It's actually going to slow us down with, re with regard to the Earth. And that means that once the moon, once we leave the moon's sphere of influence, you'll see that our Earth periapsis is lower than where we started. It's down here at 33 kilometers rather than up here at 205. Now, 33 kilometers is not correct. Um, as we discovered in prior tests, we... No, actually, no. 33 kilometers is bang on. What am I saying? Uh, it's survivable to have something at or, at or below 40 kilometers, basically. Although it, 40 kilometers is really pushing it. Um, 33 kilometers is perfect. So yeah, we're just gonna we're gonna burn this maneuver. We will swing out around behind the moon and come right back towards the Earth, and that will verify in an actual mission that this launch vehicle can toss this thing translunar. Uh, that the our command and service module can survive going out to the moon, coming back. Um, this now note: this still has the original. This is the four solar panel version, not the eight solar panel version. So um, we will. It's not all bad that we're basically not spending much time out at the moon because. Um, it's good that we didn't have a long coast period for the same reason, because we don't have a great deal of excess electric charge. So let's check out how things are going back with the Ranger stage. It's burned about half the delta V required. Given the length of this burn, we are probably going to have to fine-tune it with RCS, but that's acceptable because we actually have a fair amount of RCS propellant here. We have 
uh, what is that, about 34 liters each of animation and DO. There's two of these tanks, that's why I'm doubling that. Um, and that will give us a fair amount of capability of refining things. Okay, we have burned our way out into sunlight. See the sunrise. Nice red orange sun. Oh, that's interesting. Did we have a performance loss? Yes. Yes, we did. That's very interesting. I didn't even notice. Happily, uh, it's been 1901. All right, 15 seconds ago. So happily, towards the end of the burn, um, and it's actually not all bad that <laughs> I failed at filling those tanks properly. Uh, because we probably wouldn't have had quite enough Delta V otherwise. Um, so this time, I'm going to, once the burn completes... Now, whoops. Uh, kill that. Whoa, that actually, that did a lot of damage to her. So we need to find which one is the one that failed. That is the one that failed. So we're going to shut you down. And we're going to shut down your counterpart. Alright, so now we only have two of these, but happily that still gives us a decent thrust weight ratio if we need to burn to make any corrections. So let's look at what our orbit currently looks like. We have a lunar periapsis of 600 kilometers, and we, um... Yeah, that's less than awesome. We're gonna... <laughs> we're gonna go boom. Um... Let's add a maneuver to fine-tune things. And we need to bring things out to about here. All right, so it looks like actually we just need to fine-tune our RCS. We don't have to do any kind of burn. And it's purely re purely prograde, it looks like. We can do this. All right. So, let's go ahead and line this up. And give ourselves an acceptable Earth return. That works. Now. Now we get to detach this stage. So, we have stage separation. We can do that. We can extend out the solar panels and the antennas. And we can now back this away. And now we want to put this on a collision course with the moon. So because we don't want to deal with debris. Debris is silly. 
Let's look at what this will do. Uh, that is raising it. So let's go the other way. Yes, now we no longer have a lunar periapsis. That's fine. So we're just gonna go ahead and burn retrograde more or less in this. Not burn, just just RCS tweak retrograde in this current attitude. And there we are. That's good enough for me. That should successfully collide with the moon. But just in case it does not, I'm going to go ahead and mark this thing as debris. Rename vessel debris accept. So switch back to our capsule. Okay. Now, I believe that I, I think that we've tested enough that I don't think we have to fly a second test flight for this. So let's scrap the backup. Uh, wait for this to align properly for the solar panels. Whoa, that's less than... That is not acceptable. Let us go ahead and kill rotation. Now let's look at what that did to our orbital track. Yes, that made it very different. So let's burn a little bit and fix it. That is acceptable. Uh, and now, because this doesn't actually have built-in SAS, we're going to have to uh, monkey with MechJeb. Oh, we can't. <laughs> that is intriguing. I forgot that little aspect. Uh, I should have... I, I need to adjust that in RO, I guess. Um, all right, well, let us hope that our rotation is sufficiently killed that we don't actually deviate very much in warp. Oh, apparently we do. Isn't that nice? And that's going to... Uh, that I'm sure that caused significant issues. Yes, it did. Well, no, come on. That will do for now. Um, all right, let's look at how this is shaking up. Uh, we'll watch our electric charge do funny things as we warp out towards the moon. And we'll, we'll, that, that kind of perigee is acceptable. Uh, we'll unset that. Okay. Decent lunar flyby. All right, so let's go ahead and warpity warp. Okay, electric charge is draining enough that we 
are having some serious issues. What did that just do to everything? Um, kill rotation again. So we need to orient such that our solar panels actually will get electric charge because we can't turn SAS on, which means persistent rotation can't keep us fixed. Uh, and the reason we can't turn SAS on is because nothing on this craft provides SAS. Uh, let's go to locked. And we want to turn away from the sun, so I want to turn this off and then do that. That sets us up fairly decently. Now we need to correct this, which is actually now, broadly speaking, correct. Is there anything else we could do to this thing? No. Nope. They require SAS. All right. Whoa, that was... That's, that's not awesome. But it will have to do. Why is Kilrot giving us such high angular velocity? That will work for now. All right, kill that and warp for a time. Oh, of course. We can spin stabilize ourselves, can't we? Yes, we can. Okay. That looks decent. Let's kill that and spin up. That should work better. Indeed. Now we should get increasing electric charge, should we not? Yes, we do. Okay. So, Earth periapsis is not safe, but we can correct on RCS after our final exit from the lunar sphere of influence. It's good enough. And we're approaching the moon. And boom, we're in the lunar sphere of influence. Now let's slow the warps down. Uh, let's go ahead and let me try to correct this a little bit. That will do. All right, so we're gonna sling by the moon exit, and then proceed down the rest of our free return trajectory. And we still have 650 meters per second to correct things with if we need to. Uh, I apologize for the 
the stars field the star field swimming around uh, we can now go back to auto camera in we come we're at full electric charge that's good Let's watch the moon get bigger. As soon as I can find it. Come on, moon. Let's see. presume I have just not seen it as I was looking past it. We're currently pointed... There's the moon. Okay. It's because we're still on the darker side of it. But we're coming in towards the lighter side of it. Now it's getting lighter. Please ignore the rapidly spinning capsule. Okay, we're approaching Perisaline. Did the reference frame shift or something? Who knows? Who cares? Anyway, we fly by the moon. Look at it go! Okay. We are still on track to exit, and our Earth perigee is looking fine. So we've passed Perisaline. We're slinging on out of the Lunar Sphere of Influence. And out we go. Okay, I can stop worrying about electric charge now. And we've exited the Lunar Sphere of Influence. Periapsis looks good to me. All right, so we're actually going to... We're not doing the full figure eight. We're... coming back on this side of the Earth. So we're going to come in retrograde, which will increase our entry velocity a bit. But because our free return was not so severe, we're not actually on escape, so it kind of doesn't matter. So I'm just going to warp to here. Yeah, we did not have a highly energetic transfer. Uh, but that's okay, we don't have anybody aboard to care. Alright, time warp complete. Now, we can basically go ahead and set up for entry. So let's go ahead and do that now. We're still facing the sun. Ah, oh, the Earth is so pretty. Alright, so we'll spin, despin, and orient for retrograde for entry. We have not even fired our main engine once. That is the glory of a free return trajectory. I might have considered doing a, a tiny capture burn and then a tiny ejection burn, but I, I, not worth the, not, <laughs> not worth it. Okay, so we're re we're 
oriented for re-entry, more or less. Let's actually go a bit higher, which is about here, I think. And turn on kill rotation. Okay, that is now acceptable. So we're going to go ahead and jettison... We're still over 5,000 kilometers in altitude. We're going to warp till we're a bit closer. Ah, turn that off for now. Nope, still quite high up. And that's broadly cleaned up. Warpity warpity warp. Okay, so now we're getting close to atmospheric entry, so I'm going to go ahead and... Um, how are we doing on electric charge, anyway? We're nearly full. That's good. All right, so let's do a final orientation. It looks like we're going to re-enter just along the Terminator. So that looks decent. Let's discard the service module. Oh, we turned on the engine. Now let's discard the service module. There it goes. And unlock those tanks and turn on descent mode. And I've paused the game so I can do this without MechJeb immediately taking effect because we want to turn off pitch but turn on roll. And we'll align. Okay. There we are. Damp out the yaw. So our descent rate is 3.7 kilometers per second. We have about 800 kilometers to go. So that's about three and a half minutes. Let's warp a little bit more. Disaligning a little bit as we get closer. And yep, we're going to be re entering on the dark side, but that's okay. Alright, now let me go ahead and realign. Just about there. All right, now we're there. So let's engage MechJab. Whoa, that was an interesting misalignment it just did. But now we're fine. And let's arm the parachute. Because it would be good if we did that before we lost connection to anything else. So we're coming in rather quickly. Uh, 
but we're, we're coming in retrograde, so we don't actually have escape, even though our surface entry velocity is as high as it has literally ever been. And there goes the service module. And we'll see how this goes. We are going to have to perform a roll maneuver, it looks like. I doubt that I've entered so steeply that we can avoid it. Down to 75 kilometers already. That's pretty fast. Okay. That's getting hot. That's getting quite hot. But the ablator is ablating fine. All right. Our speed is slowing. Our sink rate is lessening. We're almost to f we're at 55 kilometers. The G's have passed seven. That's pretty steep. All right, initiating the roll. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Finish the roll. All right. There we go. So we're hanging around at this particular level in the atmosphere, although our ablator is getting worryingly low. So now we will invert our roll. I don't know about this. I guess we entered just too darn fast. Should have probably gone a bit steeper or accepted the... Huh. Well, nice knowing you, Capsule. This is not going to end well. It's good there was nobody on board. Well, not really sure what happened because we've done those before, although we were entering at 11.3 kilometers per second rather than something slower. Uh, and perhaps I should have let it do the skip rather than holding it fixed there. So here's the question. Do we... I think given the issues that we had, we probably do have to launch another uncrewed test flight. Uh, And I think that the one we apply it to is Labrador 6. So it's the same block of service module with the extra stuff. Oh, Labrador 6 is already ready. Uh, let's go ahead and replace the pilots with lead ballast. Uh, could have could have burned retrograde to with that service module to. Counteract that entry. That was that was rather annoying. That was really rather annoying. Uh, so here we are. Now what we need to do is we need to put some sort of guidance unit on it. because apparently it doesn't actually provide all right so we'll use that and it masses 0.16 which means we need 140 kilograms of lead ballast so out you go, and I 
we want 140 kilograms of lead ballast. We're at 794.098, so we want 0.24. Not quite enough. Let's decrease the oxygen and the carbon dioxide. And now let's increase this more. All right, that's acceptable. Now we go ahead and add this on. And move those out a little. And move this back on up. Okay. Now, with those edits complete, we can save. It will take 11 hours to do this. Oh, crap. I forgot to check the tanks. That would be kind of humiliating. If we have the same issue as last time. I think we won't, but let me just check. I'm also very annoyed at that reentry. I thought I had figured out all the reentry issues, but um No, that's interesting. That's very interesting indeed. Do we even have sufficient capability in this launch vehicle? Get out of there. All right. Apparently we do not. That's weird. I could have sworn that I had got this all set up, but it looks like Oh, hang on a minute. Um, 17, 6, 10. What's the nominal capacity of that tank? 56, 800 nominal. What does that look like? Nope. Well, that's really interesting. Apparently, we don't have... <laughs> Apparently, this launch vehicle can't quite hack it. Um, Could have sworn that I tested this, etc. But, uh, yeah, let's look at the staging and make sure all the staging is sane. Ah, uh, yes. The staging is not sane. Okay. Now I feel more comfortable. So we want that, and then... Yeah, it w must have been removed and reassembled at some point, so it's trying to push the launch escape tower out to the moon. That explains everything. Uh, so... That comes to the stage. Oh, no, I just literally messed up the staging myself when I put that avionics unit on. That <laughs> would tend to explain what is going on, yes. All is well. All right, let's put that down there, and finally, these can come down here. Okay, now we have plenty of Delta V. Plenty, plenty, plenty.
Okay. Yeah, okay. 12878. That's more than we need. Okay. That's... I'm no longer going crazy. I like not going crazy. Uh, it does mean we'll have to edit the edit 7 as well, uh, because 7 also has the issue where we didn't actually put full propellants in the tanks. So, before you think that propellant loading issues like that are just a Kerbal thing, like Kerbal forgot to fill up the tanks, uh, so if memory serves, one of the Pioneer launches failed because somebody had not actually filled the Thor's tanks correctly. Ah, uh, that was one of the that first string of three Pioneer missions that all failed. Um, Alright, so... Yep, all we're going to do is bring these back up, and presto, the same delta V as before. All right, save edits. Okay, and let's duplicate this as Labrador 8. And let's go ahead and warp until that's done. And we will have a longer coast period before Get out of there. Because uh, it's been, what, a few days? Four or five? Days? No. It was seven days for the other thing. All right, so it's actually going to be a probably like a 30-minute coast. But happily, we have excess capacity in this launch vehicle. So we'll be okay. Probably have like 300 meters spare. So even if we lose some to coasting, that will be fine. I don't want to wait a month, a lunar month. Where's the moon now? I'm finished zooming out. The moon's up there. All right, so we will have a fairly long coast. We will be coasting to about here. But I think that we will be okay. Launch the plane of target. We are almost in the window already. that. Okay, let us see if we can do a somewhat more, more <laughs> better launch than last time. And we have eight, seven, Six, five, engine start. Three, two, one, lift off. Roll program.
Roll program ends. More chasm is established. Meters per second, so far so good. Fifteen kilometers in altitude, seven kilometers downrange, coming up on six hundred meters per second velocity. Surface. One minute burn time remaining on the first stage. Back to east. Coming up on core engine shutoff. Core engine shutoff. First engine burn first stage burnout. Separation. Ignition of the second stage. Pitch maneuver. Escape system jettison. System switch to abort to orbit.
Thus far we have had no failures. That's good. And there goes the launch escape system far down there below us. still rising. Minute 30 until Apogee, although that is totally meaningless because we're burning uh, above the horizon. We are 270 kilometers downrange, 145 kilometers in altitude, 3200 meters per second inertial. up a second set of sounding rocket contracts so well. Yeah, we've spent about 80 million dollars on these two test flights. Uh, but money well spent because <laughs> we found some serious issues on the last one. So, that's fine. Not going to be grudging. Passing 185 kilometers apogee, that's 100 nautical miles to standard parking orbit. Still sinking, but slower. Two minutes burn time remaining on the second stage. Boil off here is fairly reasonable. Almost finished fixing our inclination. One minute 45 remaining. 650 kilometers downrange, 192 kilometers in altitude, 4,600 meters per second in ocean. Okay, just about time to start pitching down a bit. Because our time to Apogee was going up. Don't want that. Want it to go down. Okay, we'll keep pitching down. Just about... Whoa! That was interesting. Okay, one of our four NK-19s failed. Now, that does not affect our Delta V to orbit. It does affect our time to orbit, which will affect... It doesn't affect the launch vehicle's Delta V, but it does affect their gravity losses. However, we are traveling quickly enough horizontally that we should we shouldn't gain too much in the way of gravity losses and we do have some spare capacity on the stage as I mentioned in the vehicle assembly building 
All right, so let's... Now what I'm not going to do is shut that one down. Unless we get to like the last few seconds and the, the yaw becomes impossible to deal with. Pitch down. 40 seconds remaining. Let's... Um, Hopefully will not materially change our gravity losses. Alright, I'm going to shut this down as well. Such that we don't have to worry about off-axis. Final stage. Pitch down a little bit. Oh, whoops, I've not been watching. My inclination. Because I was busy worrying about that failure. So let's bring it back down. up. Come right. Yeah, let's not correct the vertical speed until later. But we are going to correct our inclination right now. is acceptable. Relative inclination is quite low. We did not expend all that much delta V getting to orbit. That is impressive. Only 9106 meters per second expended. We have 300 meters per second, no, 400 meters per second margin, if not 500 meters per second. So that is pretty not bad. So that's already deactivated. RCS test. Now let's go ahead and set up our free return. Home and transfer. Yeah, so um, we've got quite a coast period. We've got a coast all the way to there. So I don't, we might, we might lose some of our delta V, but hopefully not a great deal. Now let's go ahead and try to make this a nice fancy correct thing. Um, 
Let's see. So, I think we want to be up to about here. Okay. And let's increase the delta V up to about here. I think that's about right. And what does that look like? That's a very high lunar periapsis. All right, we don't want that. Nope, still not getting the free return I want. Let's add even more delta V in here. See how that works. No, that uh, involves escape. Let's go ahead and bring this back quite a bit to about here. Yes! Now we're talking. Yep, now we're talking. All right, let's try varying this ever so slightly. See how this works. Bring it in. Whoops. Nope, apparently that's the minimum you can do from there. Oh, and we're, we don't have an above ground perisaline either. So. I used to be able to do these just like a week ago, and now I've forgotten. It's very annoying. Wrong way. Move it down.
That's still way out there. Right, let's try this then. Getting there. Not quite. Let's watch. Does that go in or out? Out. Let's move it in there. What does that do to this? Yeah, now we finally got it. Okay, that's good. Now. Nope, that's still somewhat high. So, bring it on down. 369. 265. Ugh, now it's going up again. That's less than awesome. And... Now we're back to having a below ground perisaline. Ugh, this is this is obnoxious. Um I mean I guess it's not It's not insurmountable if we don't have an immediate entry periapsis just from the initial burn. Um, but I know it is possible. I just forget exactly what combination of wackiness will provide it. Um, Five oh seven. Nope, that brings it out again. All right. Yeah, it'd be nice if if MechJeb actually had the facility to just plot a plot a free return without my having to futz with it. Um. Let's give it a bunch more delta B and see how that works. That is not giving us a sufficient we we are coming in on the right side of this. That confuses me. Yeah. Yeah, there must be something that I'm missing. Yeah, it's just it's not giving me the right... Um... Alright, well, we'll just, we'll accept this, I guess. 
that's a workable lunar periapsis and we'll just I mean we're going for orbit anyway so we'll just we can correct once we sling out I've spent enough time futzing with that um, 24 minutes Wait until we have connection again. We do now. So let's go ahead and orient towards the node. Although I guess what I probably should have done was orient towards the sunlight, but... Uh, to minimize boil off, but we'll go with this for now. It's fine. It's only 17 minutes from now. Whoa, 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 whoa. What the heck are you doing? That's crazy. Why did MacJeb just decide to burn the node despite it being in 16 minutes? That makes zero sense. Ah. Uh, okay. We have to now remake the node, which is wonderful. It was around here, if memory serves. And it needs to be earlier. Yeah, that is not an acceptable lunar periapsis for this free return. Alright, that's fairly workable. Alright. Ooh, that, we finally actually got it correct. Look at that, there's no... Right, the, the, the return perigee is correct, and the lunar periapsis is 116. Awesome. We did it. We did it. Okay. the maneuver. All right, now we've got a bit much boil off. And we want to burn about 2 minutes 30 seconds it looks like. All right. And now I need to start dumping locks. I'll dump a little locks.
That will do. Okay, that's an appropriate light. So with that long coast period, we did lose a little bit of, a little bit more than our our over provisioned LH2. So we had to dump a bit of oxygen. We still haven't dumped enough, but we have plenty of delta V, so it doesn't actually matter. Yep, we still have 350 meters per second spare. So I'll go ahead and reset these things. Okay. bit over half the burn done. Twelve hundred meters per second left in the burn. We had about fifteen thirty left in our stage, so we'll be fine. Apogee past twenty kilometers. second remaining in the burn.
closing in on it. And burn complete. Now let's look and see what we got. That is far too high. Let's look at our lunar thingy. Ugh. That's not awesome. We did not actually do very well. <sighs> Alright, so I'm going to actually... We're going to flip retrograde. Because I'm probably actually going to need to burn the main engines for this. Whoa, why did it just do that? What is going on here? Interesting. We've used up our RCS. Uh, Alright, so we'll fine-tune using the CSM. So, detach. Turn this stuff on. Okay, that's decent. And that's a very dangerous free return. But we're going to correct things ourselves anyway. It doesn't matter. Uh, that's a fairly... That's an orbit fairly in line with the ecliptic. Well, not with the ecliptic. With uh, the Earth's orbital... The Moon's orbital plane. Alright, and it's a fairly low... So that works. All right, so now we need to adjust such that we align with the sun. And right now we're getting full sunlight on everything. Close enough. Now we need to fine tune our lunar thingy again. A hundred kilometers will do. All right. There we are. Everything's aligned. And we'll go ahead and look at the stage. And what do we want to do? 
we want to burn such that such that we just go ahead and plonk into the moon. Alright, that's fine. So I believe that this can be done. How does it have no connection? Oh, does it have no battery life? It has no battery life, that's why. Alright, so we just make it debris. That's fine. And rather than trying to deal with the swing by the moon and all that stuff right now, I'm going to have to call uh, an end to this episode. Um, thank you, everyone, for watching. I hope that you enjoyed it. I hope that it was useful, that you learned something from it. And I hope to see you again next time. Thanks and bye-bye. Loading, loading, loading. There we are. Now that is a <laughs> that has a very short and fat first stage. I forgot I forgot just how <laughs> I forgot what the launch vehicle looked like. It's pretty funny. Um Right. So we're going to want to, uh, as usual, I have to go ahead and look up what what uh, my actual uh, launch parameters should be. They should be Eighty, one fifty, forty. According to that, I'm not sure I believe it. Let me check my other folder. Uh, AR. Nope, that's weird. Well, okay. But we do know that we have fifty-six eight hundred nominal liquid hydrogen. Okay, that's cool. Let's go ahead and target the moon. The moon set as target. Now, oh, that's intriguing. It looks like ugh. E it looks like we might have to do a full coast, which means I'm inclined actually to just wait a few days, kind of regardless. Because um, we actually want a coast period. All right. Now let's go ahead and launch into plane of target. All right, so this means Okay, and let's duplicate this as Labrador 8. And let's go ahead and Warp until that's done. And we will have a longer coast period before 
Get out of there. Because uh, it's been, what, a few days? Four or five? No. It was seven days for the other thing. All right, so it's actually going to be a probably like a 30-minute coast. But happily, we have excess capacity in this launch vehicle. So we'll be okay. Probably have like 300 meters spare. So even if we lose some to coasting, that will be fine. I don't want to wait a month, a lunar month. Where's the moon now? Well, I'm finished zooming out. The moon's up there. All right, so we will have a fairly long coast. We will be coasting to about here. But I think that we will be okay. Launch the plane of target. We are almost in the window already. Deactivate that. Okay, let us see if we can do a somewhat more <laughs> better launch than last time. And we have eight, seven, six, five engines start. Three. Given the length of this burn, we are probably going to have to fine-tune it with RCS. But that's acceptable because we actually have a fair amount of RCS propellant here. We have... Uh, what is that? About 34 liters each of MH and NTO. There's two of these tanks. That's why I'm doubling that. Um, and that will give us a fair amount of capability of refining things. Okay, we have burned our way out into sunlight. Can see the sunrise. Nice red-orange sun. Oh, that's interesting. Did we have a performance loss? Yes. Yes, we did. That's very interesting. I didn't even notice. Happily, uh, it's been 1901. All right, 15 seconds ago. So happily, towards the end of the burn. Um, and it's actually not all bad that <laughs> I failed at filling those tanks properly. Uh, because we probably wouldn't have had quite enough Delta V otherwise. Um, so this time, I'm going to, once the burn completes... Now, whoops. Uh, kill that. Whoa, that actually...
actually that did a lot of damage to her. So we need to find which one is the one that failed. That is the one that failed. So we're going to shut you down. Okay, bit over half the burn done. meters per second left in the burn. We had about 15.30 left in our stage, so we'll be fine. Apogee passed 20 kilometers. second remaining in the burn. Burn complete. Now let's look and see what we got. That is far too high. Let's look at our lunar thingy. Ugh. That's... Nope, that brings it out again. All right. Yeah, it'd be nice if, if MechJeb actually had the facility to just plot a, plot a free return without my having to futz with it. Um, let's give it a bunch more Delta B and see how that works. That is not giving us a sufficient... Are we, we are coming in on the right side of this. That confuses me. Yep. Yeah, there must be something that I'm missing.
Yeah, it's just it's not giving me the right... Um... All right, well, we'll just, we'll accept this, I guess. That's a workable lunar periapsis, and we'll just, I mean, we're going for orbit anyway, so we'll, we'll just, we can correct once we sling out. I've spent enough time futzing with that. Um, 24 minutes. Let's wait until we have connection again. We do now. So let's go ahead and orient towards the node. Seconds so far, so good. Five hundred fifteen kilometers in altitude, seven kilometers downrange, coming up on six hundred meters per second velocity. Surface. minute burn time remaining on the first stage. Back to east. Coming up on core engine shutoff. Core engine shutoff. First engine burnt, first stage burnout, separation, ignition of the second stage. Oh, please tell me I didn't do something stupid. I have a sinking suspicion that I did something very stupid. I did do something very stupid. Well, uh, I guess we're doing a free return mission with this. We're not doing a full lunar orbital mission. That explains a lot of things. That's acceptable. Alright. Uh, apparently we were using our Earth orbital service module rather than our lunar orbital service module. That is why we have 1.5 kilometers extra delta V right now. 
Uh, that was really quite stupid of me. But if we do a proper free return trajectory, we will simply loop right around the moon and come right back home. Um, and we have plenty of margin for error. Now, that should give us, it gives us a memory series about 660 meters per second delta V, which is fine for fine-tuning things. Um, so, let's go ahead and set up a home and transfer. And now we get to make it a free return. So, we want to... put a fair amount of extra delta V in and we want to burn well ahead of the moon somewhere around here um, come on there we are guess we did we went way ahead of the moon this time Look at what this entails. Okay. Wrong side. That's a nice looking free return. And what kind of Okay. Decent lunar flyby. Alright, so let's go ahead and warpity warp. Okay, electric charge is draining enough that we are having some serious issues. What did that just do to everything. Um, kill rotation again. So we need to orient such that our solar panels actually will get electric charge. Because we can't turn SAS on, which means persistent rotation can't keep us fixed. Uh, and the reason we can't turn SAS on is because nothing on this craft provides SAS. Uh, let's go to locked, and we want to turn away from the sun, so I want to turn this off and then do that. That sets us up fairly decently. Now we need to correct this, which is actually now, broadly speaking, correct. Is there anything else we could do to this thing? No. Nope. They require SAS. All right. Whoa, that was... That's, that's not awesome. But it will have to do... Why is Kilrot giving us such high angular velocity? That will work for now. All right, kill that and warp for a time.
hundred meters per second. So far, so good. kilometers in altitude, seven kilometers downrange, coming up on 600 meters per second velocity, surface. One minute burn time remaining on the first stage. Back due east. Coming up on core engine shutoff. Core engine shutoff. First engine burnt, first stage burnout, separation, ignition of the second stage. Pitch maneuver. Escape system jettison. Defensive as some of our, even some of our lunar probes, if memory serves. Some of our original Catapult A lunar probe launches were about, I think, four to 5,000, and this was something like 45,000, if not more. But happily, it's far less expensive and far lighter it's less than a third of the mass. Um, it's more like two sevenths the math, the, the mass of a Saturn V launch, and certainly way cheaper, like gobs cheaper. All right, our inclination is lowering. Time to apogee. I don't like that. I feel like we should pitch up a little bit more. I feel like maybe my notes on how to launch this thing were lying to me. Or other things have changed since then. I don't know. So we've pitched up a little bit extra. our desired insertion apogee, but that's fine because we, that's expected. Okay, now we're going to pitch down because I like that this is, this was decreasing much slower. We only have about three minutes burn time on this stage remaining. So, so far so good.
We're still not even going four kilometers per second, our senator fixed. Um, so. Wait, is. I think EC, ECEF is inertial, but I'm not sure. I forget. Alright. Apogee is still rising. We haven't picked up that much in the way of steering losses, which is nice. It's, um... Yeah, only 21 meters per second so far, steering losses. That's a very high lunar periapsis. All right, we don't want that. Nope, still not getting the free return I want. Uh... Let's add even more Delta V in here. See how that works. No, that uh, involves escape. All right, let's go ahead and bring this back quite a bit to about here. Yes, now we're talking. Yep, now we're talking. All right, let's try varying this ever so slightly. See how this works. Bring it in. Whoops. Nope, apparently that's the minimum you can do from there. Oh, and we we don't have an above ground periceline either. So hmm. Ooh. That, we finally actually got it correct. Look at that. There's no... Right, the, the, the return perigee is correct, and the lunar periapsis is 116. Awesome. We did it. We did it. Okay. Warp to the maneuver. All right, now we've got a bit much boil off. And we want to burn about 2 minutes 30 seconds, it looks like. All right. And now I need to start dumping locks, 
I'll dump a little locks. That will do. Okay, that's an appropriate light. So with that long coast period, we did lose a little bit of, a little bit more than our, our over provisioned LH2. So we had to dump a bit of oxygen. We still haven't dumped enough, but we have plenty of delta V, so it doesn't actually matter. zooming out. The moon's up there. Alright, so we will have a fairly long coast. We will be coasting to about here. But I think that we will be okay. Launch the plane of target. We are almost in the window already. Deactivate that. Okay, let us see if we can do a Somewhat more, more <laughs> better launch than last time. And we have eight, seven, six, five engines start. Three, two, one, lift off. program. Roll program ends. Launch azimuth established. back up, and presto, the same delta V as before. Alright, save edits. Ok, 
Okay, and let's duplicate this as Labrador 8. And let's go ahead and warp until that's done. And we will have a longer coast period before... Get out of there. Because uh, it's been, what, a few days? Four or five? No. It was seven days for the other thing. All right, so it's actually going to be a probably like a 30-minute coast. But happily, we have excess capacity in this launch vehicle. So we'll be okay. Probably have like 300 meters spare. So even if we lose some to coasting, that will be fine. I don't want to wait a month, a lunar month. Where's the moon now? Well, I'm finished zooming out. The moon's up there. All right, so we will have a fairly long coast. We will be coasting to about here. But I think that we will be okay. Launch the plane of target. We are almost in the window already. Deactivate that. Okay, let us see if we can do a somewhat more <laughs> better launch than last time. Back due east. Coming up on core engine shutoff. Core engine shutoff. First engine burnt, first stage burnout, separation, ignition of the second stage. Pitch maneuver. Escape system jettison. Switch to abort to orbit. Thus far, we have had no failures. That's good.
And there goes the launch escape system far down there below us. Still rising. Minute 30 until Apogee, although that is totally meaningless. Uh, that's not. Awesome, why is it so high? That's lower, but again, that leaves us coming in too sharply. That's acceptable. What does it look like at the moon? Also acceptable. All right, let's go ahead and burn this thing. Interestingly enough, we're almost at the node. Now, had I more time, I probably could have refined that to a really low lunar periapsis, about 100 kilometers, while still having an acceptable free return, but I'm willing to accept this simply because we are just in the business of demonstrating its possibility. Um, Okay, before I forget again, let's deactivate that. All right, now execute to node and provide some ullage and ignition. Okay, so as you could see, um, and Hopefully on follow-up missions, when we have more time to sit around and plan, I will go into more detail as to what I did while I was doing it. But, as you can see here, we've created that traditional figure eight free return loop. Which, which works in about that pattern. Um, and what's going on here? is that we're coming in ahead of the moon and swinging by the moon. And in doing so, the moon is going to provide a negative gravity assist. It's actually going to slow us down with, re with regard to the Earth. And that means that once the moon... once That will do. All right. So we're going to sling by the moon, exit, and then proceed down the rest of our free return trajectory. And we still have 650 meters per second to correct things with if we need to. Uh, I apologize for the the stars field the star field swimming around. Uh, we can now go back to auto camera. In we come. We're at full electric charge, that's good. Let's watch the moon get bigger. As soon as I can find it. Come on, moon. Let's see. Hmm. 
Hmm. I presume I have just not seen it as I was looking past it. We're currently pointed... There's the moon. Okay. It's because we're still on the darker side of it. But we're coming in towards the lighter side of it. Now it's getting lighter. Please ignore the rapidly spinning capsule. Okay, we're approaching Perisaline. Did the reference frame shift or something? Who knows? Who cares? Anyway, we fly by the moon. Look at it go! Okay. Not quite enough. Let's decrease the oxygen and the carbon dioxide. And now let's increase this more. All right, that's acceptable. Now we go ahead and Add this on. And move those out a little. And move this back on up. Okay. Now, with those edits complete, we can save. It will take 11 hours to do this. Oh, crap. I forgot to check the tanks. That would be kind of humiliating. if we have the same issue as last time. I think we won't, but let me just check. I'm also very annoyed at that reentry. I thought I had figured out all the reentry issues, but... Um, no, that's interesting. That's very interesting indeed. Do we even have sufficient capability in this launch vehicle? Get out of there. All right. Apparently we do not. That's weird. I could have sworn that I had got this all set up, but it looks like Oh, hang on a minute. Um, 17, 610. Do adjust this a little bit such that we actually have a <laughs> lunar periapsis that doesn't kill us. Oops, a little bit more. There, how does that look? 191. Oops, that's still going to kill.
kill us. That's too much. That is not also not acceptable because it will also kill us. So let's try really rather a bit more. Or a bit less, I guess. Yeah, that looks better. Okay, and what kind of... Heh. That is not a survivable per return perigee. Is that a survivable one? Not as such, no. Um, that looks rather more survivable. Uh, that's not awesome. Why is it so high? That's lower, but again, that leaves us coming in too sharply. That's acceptable. What does it look like at the moon? Also acceptable. All right, let's go ahead and burn this thing. Interestingly enough, we're almost at the node. Now, had I more time, I probably could have refined... Yeah, there must be something that I'm missing. Yeah, it's just it's not giving me the right... Um... All right, well, we'll just we'll accept this, I guess. That's a workable lunar periapsis, and we'll just... I mean, we're going for orbit anyway, so we'll, we'll just... We can correct once we sling out. I've spent enough time futzing with that. Um, 24 minutes... Wait until we have connection again. We do now. So let's go ahead and orient towards the node. Although I guess what I probably should have done was orient towards the sunlight, but... Uh, to minimize boil off, but we'll go with this for now. It's fine. It's only 17 minutes from now. Whoa, 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 whoa. What the heck are you doing? That's crazy. Why did MacJeb just decide to burn the node despite it being in 16 minutes? That makes zero sense. Ah. Uh, okay. We have to now remake the node, which is wonderful.
it was around here, if memory serves. And it needs to be earlier. All right. That is acceptable. Relative inclination is quite low. We did not expend all that much delta V getting to orbit. That is impressive. Only 9106 meters per second expended. We have 300 meters per second, no, 400 meters per second margin, if not 500 meters per second. So that is pretty, not bad. So, that's already deactivated. RCS test. Now let's go ahead and set up our free return. Home and transfer. Yeah, so um, we've got quite a coast period. We've got a coast all the way to there. So I don't, we might, we might lose some of our delta V, but hopefully not a great deal. Now let's go ahead and try to make this a nice, fancy, correct thing. Um, let's see. So, I think we want to be up to about here. Let's increase the delta V up to about here. I think that's about right. And what does that look like? That's a very high lunar periapsis. All right, we don't want that. So, switch back to our capsule. Okay. Now, I believe that, I, I think that we've tested enough that I don't think we have to fly a second test flight for this. So let's scrap the backup. Uh, wait for this to align properly for the solar panels. Whoa, that's less than... That is not acceptable. Let us go ahead and kill rotation. Now let's look at what that did to our orbital track. Yes, that made it very different. So let's burn a little bit and fix it. That is acceptable. Uh, and now, because this doesn't actually have built-in SAS, we're going to have to uh, monkey with MechJeb.
Oh, we can't. <laughs> that is intriguing. I forgot that little aspect. Uh, I should have... I, I need to adjust that in RO, I guess. Um, Alright, well, let us hope that our rotation is sufficiently killed that we don't actually deviate very much in warp. Oh, apparently we do. Isn't that nice? And that's gonna... Ugh, that... I'm sure that caused significant issues. Yes, it did. Whoa. No, come on. That will do for now. Um, all right, let's... All right. Yes, this hopefully will not materially change our gravity losses. All right, I'm going to shut this down as well, such that we don't have to worry about off-axis maneuvers. Okay. On the final stage. down a little bit. Oh, whoops, I've not been watching. My inclination because I was busy worrying about that failure. So let's bring it back down. Pitch up. not correct the vertical speed until later, but we are going to correct our inclination right now. just along the Terminator. So, that looks decent. Let's discard the service module. Oh, we turned on the engine. Now let's discard the service module. There it goes. And unlock those tanks and turn on descent mode. And I've paused the game so I can do this without Mech Jeb immediately taking effect because we want to turn off pitch but turn on roll. And we'll align. Okay. 
There we are. Damp out the yaw. So our descent rate is 3.7 kilometers per second. We have about 800 kilometers to go. So that's about three and a half minutes. Let's warp a little bit more. Aligning a little bit as we get closer. And yep, we're going to be re entering on the dark side, but that's okay. Alright, now let me go ahead and realign. Just about there. All right, now we're there. So let's engage Mechjab. Whoa, that was an interesting misalignment it just did. But now we're fine. And let's arm the parachute. Because it would be good if we did that before we lost connection to anything else. So we're coming in rather quickly. Uh, so. That comes to the stage. Oh, no, I just literally messed up the staging myself when I put that avionics unit on. That <laughs> would tend to explain what is going on, yes. All is well. All right, let's put that down there, and finally, these can come down here. Okay, now we have plenty of Delta V. Plenty, plenty, plenty. Okay. Yeah, okay. 12878. That's more than we need. Okay. That's I'm no longer going crazy. I like not going crazy. Uh it does mean we'll have to edit the edit 7 as well, um because 7 also has the issue where we didn't actually put full propellants in the tanks. So before you think that propellant loading issues like that are just a Kerbal thing, like Kerbal forgot to fill up the tanks. Uh, so if memory serves, one of the Pioneer launches failed because somebody had not actually filled the Thor's tanks correctly. Ah, uh, that was one of the that first string of three Pioneer missions that all failed. Um, Alright, so... Yep, all we're going to do is... Bring these back up, and presto, the same Delta V as before. All right, save edits. Okay, and let's duplicate this as Labrador 8. And let's go ahead and 
warp until that's done. And we will have a longer coast period before 